Well, I appreciate you joining me tonight. I really do. And this is a way that I've been offering classes just to kind of keep in touch with people and keep getting my work out. I used to teach on a regular basis um, in a yoga studio or other studios around town, energy work, healing, yoga, restorative yoga, seasonal events and stuff like that. And of course, due to COVID, <laughs> here we are, right? I definitely miss that, but just feel that this is at least some way in which I can still connect and teach a lot of what I do. I, re I really do like to do that. And so tonight, the subject is going to be on how to create that spiritual practice so that we can be able to really find a way to start. So I don't know how much you know about me and those that are joining. I know had several people sign up and so a few may come in later, but I offer spiritual upgrades. I help women to really kind of move through transitions, create a spiritual practice and really help them to kind of up level their vibration and how they go about in their day to day, especially the day to day. So through teaching techniques and energy healing and even just some basic skills, I help you find that practice, create it for you, as well as creating a toolbox that can help you to release stress, anxiety, help you to remove the old imprints, things that are keeping you stuck in life, and especially some of those addictive behaviors, which we all have. Vices is another way to look at it, you know, whether it's shopping or eating or drinking or smoking or whatever it is, helping you to find the way to remove whatever it is that's getting in your way. I'm also the host of the podcast, The Empowered Spirit Show, where I explore that connection to the human spirit in a way that helps you navigate your life. I love the show. I've been meeting tons of great teachers and really just love the opportunity to really kind of explore it deeper. And I started the podcast way back in 2012 when I first moved to Birmingham from New York because this kind of work really wasn't known. So it was a way to educate other people. And I'm also the author of the book, Confessions of a, Tower, of a Shower Dapper, The Ultimate Guide to Living Your Purpose with EFT. It's a way to help you really remove the limited beliefs and go forward in your path, especially if it's maybe different than others. So that's kind of what I do. So tonight, tonight, what I'd like to do is just kind of take a moment and just notice where you are. Notice what's going on inside of you. Notice if there's stress or anxiety, maybe you've been running around. Maybe this is the first time you sat still all day. And just kind of ask yourself, like, is there something else I can be doing to help myself ease out of one part of my day and into another? Am I carrying too much stress? Has COVID gotten to me? And these are ways that we have to help us reflect on what's going on in our own lives. So now just take a moment and take a deep inhale and exhale. And just call in your spirit, just presence that energy of who you are and just drop into the heart. Take another deep breath. And exhale. And just imagine, imagine your days full of peace. Imagine your day moving through ups and downs, ins and outs, but finding a way to balance, to not get caught in a drama. And to feel a connection to something deep within you. Taking another deep inhale. And exhale. I just like to say, notice what you notice. A little peaceful energy coming in. Maybe a little shift. And then just bringing that awareness back. Coming back. So you will hear me often say, notice what you notice, because that's a big part of having a spiritual practice. We notice where we are, we notice what's going on. When we take that time to notice, 
It keeps us from doing all that reaching for the other things in life. And that is part of it. I know it can be confusing because there's so many things out there. Do I need cards? Do I need crystals? Do I need essential oils? Do I need sage? We have all those questions. So I thought I would just kind of break it down and really help you start to figure out ways to do it. I do have a really great um, PDF on that, a little ebook on it, and I can send it to you if you'd like, but we're gonna kind of use it as our guide and to really help us make it so much easier to break down. So I'm just gonna share this here. So it's five simple steps to setting up your spiritual practice. And the thing that I like to really start and look at is that the first thing that we do look at is that there has been research showing that there is a growing body of evidence indicating that spiritual practices are associated with better health and well being for many reasons. Increases your compassion, helps you to focus your attention, helps you to quiet the mind. That's a really big one. I know for me it is. A regular spiritual practices gives you that time to heal. I love that idea, that time, like, okay, I'm just going to take a few moments and see what's going on underneath all this running around or all this craziness or all these energies going on around me. It will help to clarify the understanding of your life. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? Which leads you to your purpose and why you're experiencing also some of the challenges you're having in finding that purpose as well. So if you give your courage, it can give you the courage to fulfill your dreams and intentions and it benefits fits your life in so many ways. So I find that that courage, especially like having that spiritual practice, even if we just take a few moments, like, okay, let me just take a moment and have the courage to go inside helps to lift your vibration. I know when my mom died, just having that courage to like sit still and go through the grief was really the best thing I could have done, right? Instead of trying to push it away or rush it or pretend it wasn't there. So what I like to do is start with the first thing and that's create a space, create a space that you can go to each and every day. So some of my clients have found many different things. Some will say, oh, I found one in the closet or I found one in the bathroom or I found one in my bedroom or I have a little desk area or an outside porch. It doesn't really matter where you find it really, but it's so that you have a place that you can come to because what you do each and every day when you find that special place is it builds the energy. And then days when you don't feel like doing anything, just sitting in that space can help you feel really, really good. And then you can personalize it and make it your own. So I like to use the idea, like use a table, a window seal, a countertop, something like that to help you create that. Some people call it an altar. Some people go, oh, that's weird. You don't really have to label it, but it's just a place to bring some of the things. Kind of like what I have set up behind me is my virtual classroom. So I like to use the idea of a few elements, an acronym for air, fire, earth, and water. So if you bring in something from each of those elements, you can feel like, okay, this is complete. We don't want to clutter it, but something that can help you to do it. So simple as like the fire for the candle, the flower has the waters. You can even use like the air, the sage, because it lights that fire, or you could have essential oils. So anything at all, I also like to have crystals. And then it helps me feel like, okay, I have all the things I need. And so it's that simple. You can make it more elaborate if you want, but when you have that place to come to each and every day, it reminds you <laughs> simply to come there each and every day, and then you build that energy. So that's kind of the first thing that I like to look at. Then the second thing that I like to look at is taking a few moments and sitting in your sacred space, all right? These are all the elements here, air, fire, just everything I've said here. So then we sit in the space, and that can be for as simple as five minutes. I like to say, start with five minutes. You sit, you breathe, and that's where you just really present your energy and take the time to do that. Just like we did with the opening. It really can help you slow down and stop and do whatever it is that you need to do on the inside. Now, one of the things I say is if you can't do five minutes, I know it sounds like, oh, five minutes is nothing, but surprisingly people say, oh, I just don't have time for five minutes. Is sit for one minute. Because even one minute's gonna help you make it consistent because the most hard, the hardest thing to do, the most thing that I see is that people are not consistent and then they don't sit for one day and then the second day and they're like, oh, see, I knew I couldn't do it. So that's why I really say commit to each and every day sitting and breathing. Start with five minutes. I find even five minutes can lead to 10 minutes. Ideally, I teach my clients to work up to 20. That helps the brain, that helps the resonance of the body, and that really can shift the brain patterns, which is really what we want to do. We all run around the beta state way too much. So then on a busy day, if you can, again, set it for one, you're more likely to come back. And then you can have that satisfaction of really creating that. 
But see, that's as simple as it can be. It's just taking those five minutes and just pausing. And that in itself will help you to slow down. It's going to help you think of what's going on. And it's going to build, give you that ability to build that time. And then again, as you're sitting in your space, it's going to build the energy around you to really help open you up to a deeper presence. So that's the second thing. So, so far, so good. It's not that hard, really. It's just the consistency. And then we want to connect with our higher self. It's exactly what we did in the beginning, calling in our spirit, just really calling it in, presencing that energy. You can call in your higher self, you can call it spirit, whatever you want, and just feel that presence coming in for you because that's where your guidance is. Everything we need is right inside of ourselves, right? So taking the time, calling it in, and again, noticing that energy, which is actually the next step is just really noticing, noticing that this energy is available to you. So noticing what you notice is going to help bring that awareness, right? It's like, okay, why am I so stressed today? Why was I so stressed yesterday? <laughs> What's going on? And then a journal is a great way to sit down and presence that energy. It's really going to help you to notice what's underneath. You know, I shared one of my stories on social media this week about as a kid, I was a fat kid. I was teased. My mother took me to a fat doctor, gave me diet pills, and nobody really ever helped me to look underneath it. And that went on for a really long time. And it wasn't until really going through a divorce, really starting to work with a spiritual counselor that I actually got to the root of what was going on in my life. That was the first thing that actually helped me feel peace. I'd been in therapy, talk therapy, children's therapy, all kinds of therapy for months. But once I started working on the energy level and creating the spiritual practice, that's when I noticed everything began to shift and change for me. It really allowed me to see some of the childhood issues that I was covering up from. And then even in my divorce, noticing I was an empath, noticing that I was highly intuitive. This became more and more aware the more that I really did sit still. And so noticing how you feel is going to help you come back to you rather than reach on the outside for all those other things. And then the fifth step that we want to work on really is offering gratitude. Gratitude's an ascending emotion. So what that means is when we're feeling not so great and we go, okay, let me just take a moment and realize, thank you. I have dinner on my table. The sunset was beautiful. I got all my work done or most of it. We start to lift the vibration rather than, oh, I didn't get anything done today. I'm never going to catch up. I am so stressed. So then we stay in that lower level of energy. And it is a choice. It is a choice on how we want to feel. So I do say like offer 10 things that you're grateful for. And one of the things I noticed was around COVID. When COVID first started coming out, there was so much fear. I was waking up every morning with lots of fear, lots of anxiety for really no reason, but I was picking up on the universal energy. And so that fear was really what was like making me crazy. So every morning I changed this to like a morning thing, just like go through my schedule. What am I grateful for? the opportunities I have, the clients I'm working with. And then it helped me to lift the vibration before I even got out of bed. And I began to set myself up for such a better day. So these are really the basic steps. And if you see, they're really not that complicated, right? You can just start with a few elements, adding them to your sacred space, sit quietly, do some breathing, connect with your higher self, notice what you notice, and then offer gratitude for all of that. And that's kind of where we start, all right? And then you'll notice the clarity, the clarity and the focus. You're gonna help reduce the stress, the overwhelm and the anxiety. And I think one of the greatest things here is you start to grow your intuition. So it doesn't have to be complicated, right? Yes, you can add in other tools. Yes, you can add in Oracle cards. Yes, you can add in essential oils. I mean, we can go on and on and on about all the many things that we wanna add in, but do you need it? Not really. One of the things that I found to be the most effective for me was learning Reiki energy. Reiki energy is an amazing self-care tool. It works on all levels of the body, the emotional, the mental, the physical. And the thing that I really loved was it had a spiritual component. Going back to the time when I was going through that divorce, I didn't, I was raised Jewish. My children were raised without a religion. Their dad was Catholic, Italian. And so we really had nowhere to go. I had nowhere to go. And I knew I needed that extra bit of faith or help or whatever. And so when I found out that my spiritual counselor was working with energy work, hands-on Reiki, I found out I could learn it. That's really what changed so much inside of me. 
I went and began and started studying, started learning, started using Reiki every day. And what I noticed was that my five minutes turned into 20. And then I noticed I better use a timer or I'm going to be late to everything <laughs> because it's just so comforting running your energy. It's so loving. It's so easy. It's as easy as that. Just put your hands on yourself, just relax. And the energy moves through and it helps to move all that energy out. And sure enough, like meditation time went by so much easier. And then it became like every day I need to do this. And so you can find different parts throughout your day to do this kind of work, right? Like riding on the train. I had one client that was always talking about, you know what? Every morning I get on the train and like halfway there, this is when I lived in the city for many years. She said, by the time I got off the train, I was ready for work. And then coming home, the same thing, running your energy on the train, you know, and it's just very subtle, got off, ready for my kids. Very easy to do, right? And then it helps us find those other ways. I have another client, Leah, that was a nurse and she was amazed at how much it was helping her deal with like craziness in the hospital, angry patients, and just really calming her down and just really helping her to really process that energy because she was affecting her with headaches. According to the AMA, 85% of physical ailments is unresolved emotional issues. And so when we get to those emotional issues, that's where we really can find that true healing for all of us. And so I found that having that Reiki practice really was like such a great thing. Every day I can run my energy. Every day I can work with this. And even for my children, they were like, oh my God, mommy, I love you. They were like kindergarten, first grade. It was like it created such a bond of energy. And so you can add that into your spiritual practice. And I find that was one of the greatest things that shifted everything for me and really did shift my life. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. Then you can add other modalities and you can add your yoga practice in. I mean, my general routine is wake up in the morning. I do some of my work in bed. Like I said, I start with my gratitude, go through my day so I can get out of bed feeling really good. And then I start with a Reiki meditation, just laying Reiki energy. I have a sauna. So in the winter, I use my infrared sauna. I'm in the sauna, just running the energy, centering, quieting. I do my breathing work. Then I get out and do a yoga pro, uh, practice. So depending on you know how much time I have, I might even then do a card or two, but really that's my main practice right there. And then at night, I kind of change it up a little bit with generally like some kind of salt bath, some gentle calming, breathing in the bath. And then that allows me just to kind of gratitude for my day, offering that gratitude, noticing how I'm feeling. And I do like to really kind of acknowledge what I've done versus what I didn't get done, right? The ego can't really tell. When we say we didn't get stuff done, it puts us in lack and lack is not a place where any of us want to be right now. Lifting that vibration is really more and more important. And so there are many things that a spiritual practice can help you with. I think I've touched on a few. And I know even for my clients, sometimes clients come in more often than not it's for crisis, but there are many that come and say, I know there's more to life. Like there's got to be more. I really want to just find a deeper level of joy and a deeper level of fulfilling my purpose. And it could be for that reason as well. But I have noticed blood pressure goes down in many of my clients. They come to me for that. Anxiety goes down, comes to me for that. People that are stuck and want to move forward. That's another reason why people are doing that. And then the transitions, really helping people to understand that. Was that like a yes comment on the stuck energy? <laughs> Not feeling that you are, are being able to move forward. Would you like to share a little bit or? Well, I think that that's one of the big things that led me to this was like the feeling stuck and then the Reiki mm -hmm. were the two that was like, all right, I'm definitely getting on tonight because yeah. I really need to figure like, I've sent you a couple messages before, like, okay, how much is this? And I'll be like getting ready to plan it. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not ready. And so it's like the, I am stuck in this transition and I'm scared to jump on the transition. So yeah, like this was my baby step in getting here tonight. Yeah. Well, what I am offering is to get on a call with me so we can have the private. So we're not recording on this, but to get on a call with me and let's talk about it. And let's just figure out what that course of action is because there are baby steps that you can take that can be very gentle to breathe, to build your practice, right? And some people turn into a sponge, they want it all and we don't have to go crazy. But my thing is like really helping you to add it into your day-to-day -day life. I see lots of people that keep it separate, like, okay, I'm gonna do that. And then they forget all that they've done and they go out into the world and then all that craziness comes around them. But really to keep it into an everyday practice and how you can practically apply it, right? And so, yeah, so I'll give you the link to the, um, to the call. And then that way you can set up a time. And then I'm offering some bonus discounts for anybody from the webinar that wants from the masterclass that wants to 
get on a call with me from my program so that we can talk about as well. But I think that having that idea that we can move forward, having that idea that we can make changes and it doesn't have to be drastic. I mean, it can. I know that when I did start to do this work and really found it, but this was like nine months into my process of not being able to be happy, not being able to do anything, I did move quite fast. I did soak in the energy, but I had really been challenged for a long time. But I think that you can take it easily. I do have a Reiki class coming up. It's a one day class. And the only thing you need for Reiki is the desire to learn it. You don't have to be gifted. You don't have to be special. It doesn't mean, you know, oh, certain people can learn it. Anybody can learn it. They really can. And then depending on where you want to go and how much, you know, guidance you need. I was very lucky that I did find Catherine that helped me to finally move through this. And so that was very grateful that I had someone to guide me. And I think that you can move forward when someone is there to guide you. It just really depends on how you are doing and what you're doing and really where you want to make the shifts in your life. But even going back to the original topic, just really those five steps in finding that sacred space. Because I think once you find that space for you, it's going to make you feel like, oh yeah, right? That this is my place to do this. And it's going to remind you. And then keeping that one tip in mind, if you can't do it for five minutes one day, just do it for one. And that's really quite helpful because that will make it consistent because really that's what my clients say is the hardest part is being consistent. They'll miss a day, miss two, and then they'll come back and say, I knew I couldn't do it. And that's just not true. And the beautiful thing about really breathing and meditating is it takes all of this in the mind and it helps to dump it out. And that's what we really do. That's what we want to do for sure. So yes, I do offer, I think I put it in the chat. <clears throat> if you want to grab that and set up a time, definitely. I do have a Reiki class coming up. I am sharing on this week's podcast about Reiki and coronavirus, how even using Reiki can help you really strengthen your immune system and release the fear. A little controversial in the uh, podcast, but that's okay. That's part of working in the energy field. So I do think it's important and I do have some great programs that I do offer. And if this is all you need, that's great too. Continue to follow me, check out the podcast. I'm always offering something. And definitely going to have more and more unfolding as we move in. I like to take winter to kind of go within myself and then kind of like around March, putting more and more of my programs out there. Definitely. So for those that are going to be listening later, if you have any questions, reach out, you can grab the link. I'll put it in the follow-up email and I am offering $500 actually off my private mentoring program. If that's the route you want to go and there is an early bird sign up for the Reiki. So I can discuss all of that for, with you if you're interested. Definitely. So before we do close, just take a moment and let's reconnect to your spirit. Just taking a nice deep inhale and exhale. Just calling in your spirit, connecting to the greater spirit, creator, universe, feeling that connection, dropping right into the heart. Taking another deep inhale and just calling in all the spiritual teachers, the Reiki masters, your helpers, the angels, calling in your own spirit guides and just feel all of that energy of support around you. Know that you are known, know that you are a light and that having this practice within your own spirit can answer so many questions, can help you release energy. And just take a moment and see yourself moving forward. Whatever that may mean for you, moving over an obstacle, moving through it, or just taking that chance to step into a new place, new work, new job, whatever it may be for you. Inhaling. And exhaling. Taking one more deep inhale, breathing it all the way up the body. And exhale down. 
And just taking this moment to set an intention for this week, for this month, whatever it is for you. And just allow yourself to see that intention coming in, to hear it, to feel it, to know it. And then notice how you'll feel as these intentions come in for you. The joy, the peace, the calm, the abundance. And just allow it to radiate out, setting that intention, releasing the attachment, and just radiating out from your heart. Inhaling. And exhaling. Just bringing that awareness back, <clears throat> coming back, noticing how you feel, bringing that awareness back, and just choosing one of the cards here, Oracle card, <clears throat> I honor how I want to feel, <clears throat> and just leave you with that. I honor how I want to feel, which means taking the time to get quiet to know how you feel, which is always a good step. All right, any questions, let me know. Definitely look forward to speaking with you. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you for showing up and thank you for those of you watching the replay later. All right. I look forward to seeing you on my schedule to your spirit. Namaste.